I am going to record the session so that those people who are not able to attend live, who ask me for a copy of the recording, can access that recording. Um, what I want to do tonight is to talk to you a little bit about how to pass the SBR exam in March, bearing in mind we are just a few days after the results. OK, so that's my focus to talk about SBR, to talk about March. And at the end of the session, maybe I'll be talking for about 20 minutes, half an hour. There'll be a Q&A and I'm happy, genuinely happy to answer any question whatsoever um, in respect of yeah, um, SBR. It's what I do. Yeah, this is my full time uh, vocation uh, job. Uh, is to help students pass the SBR exam. So a little bit about me, very, very briefly. Um, I'm ACCA qualified. So when I was in my 20s and I was working, I self, I, I studied, did a couple of exams, self-study, found it a lot easier going to college in the evenings, in the weekends, pre-internet, pre yeah? And I qualified um, as an ACCA member, changed my life. Absolutely fantastic. At the time, I was working for a KPMG. But you know what? For me personally, practice wasn't ringing my bell. Interesting job in insolvency, dealt with the bankruptcy of uh, Gary Glitter and George Best. Those, those files passed through my uh, office. But yeah, I found my true vocation teaching. Many happy years spent at Kaplan in Borough High Street. Many happy years teaching all over the world. But all good things come to an end. And having had a spell living out and working in Singapore for a number of years, five years ago, I came home and I have been teaching online. Yeah, through the medium of FME. Now, I also do quite a lot of work with ACCA. So although I'm a, a member, I'm also involved in their, I'm also a, an, the SBR guru or tutor expert um, and help them in the background with some of the train the trainer stuff. So you may have come across some of my articles or some of my videos on the ACCA website um, because they trust me. And I'd like to think that you can trust me to help you pass the SBR exam. Really, really high level. Every question in the SBR exam is compulsory, which is why we have to cover the full syllabus. Sometimes people ask me about tips. I say, can you tip what's coming up in the exam? There's two exams, there's three exams. Because some of you do the exam in the morning, some of you do it in the afternoon. Some of you will do it on Monday. Some of you will do it on Friday. There will be different exams. Yeah. Last time, for example, some people did a cash flow question. And some people did a balance sheet question for question number one. So you're both doing the same. You're both doing the exam at the same sitting, but you're physically sitting different questions. So very, very difficult for me to tip exactly what is coming up. That's why we do, yeah, full syllabus coverage. Yeah. Um, groups, ethics, IFRS, you know what comes up in this exam. At least I hope you do. Um, writing. Yeah, it's more written than it is numerical. What do you see? What do you see? Do you look left? Do you look right? What is that? What do you see? Can you tell me in the meeting chat what you see? Yeah, a duck. If you look that way, if you look that way, it's a duck. Oh, no, if you look that way, it's a duck. If you look that way, it's a duck. But David sees a rabbit. To me, this is SBR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Semra's got the right answer. She's seeing a duck and a rabbit. All right. <laughs> when we're doing our ethics question, when we're doing our investor focus question, when we're giving our advice, when we're explaining things, 
talking about the advantages of sustainability reporting is not necessarily binary. It's not necessarily one right answer. Judgment is required. Everybody is right who said a duck. Everybody is right who said a rabbit. You both get the mark. All right. That's SBR. And so the marking requires judgment. There are certain things that we can talk about in terms of. I mean, if you'd said it was an elephant, you wouldn't have got any marks, would you? You would have been wrong. All right. There are certain structures that we can build up and take you through. OK. March. If you're going to pass this exam in March, you must have already left the station. This session is held two days after results. I assume I am speaking to students who are looking to retake SBR. Yeah, the train has left the station. Yeah, you've got to, to be on, to be able to take the SBR exam in March and have the ability and confidence to pass it. You already effectively, you don't need to be perfect, but you need to have covered the syllabus. So this session is about a little bit more about explaining about my revision product and helping you to revise for March. If you're a virgin, if you haven't started SBR, yeah, I can still help you continue to watch, listen and learn. But you should be doing SBR in June. If you haven't done the syllabus yet, if you aren't comfortable with what SBR is about, then by all means, reach out to me on a one to one basis. I can take you through stuff. Yeah, because the advice is you're going to be doing the exam in June because you need to cover the syllabus and you cannot cover the syllabus and revise in a matter of weeks. It takes months. Trust me, I want you to pass first time. I'm giving you honest advice. Time or knowledge? T for time, K for knowledge. T for time, K for knowledge. If you failed the exam, why did you fail the exam? Was it that you ran out of time, T, or was it that you didn't know enough, K? What do you think the limiting factor is for this exam if you sat it last time or if you didn't sit it last time, what do you think the general limiting factor is? T or K? Three for T. Four for T. Nicole says K. The majority of you so far are telling me that the problem with the exam, I mean, there are many problems with the exam, the cartoon overview problem with the exam is you haven't got enough time. In other words, if you had four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours to do the exam, you would be capable of getting 50. That is a beautiful situation to be in, to know that the only thing you've got to do is get a bit quicker. Yeah, probably slightly easier to get a bit quicker than it is to lower to learn a whole load of shed more knowledge. If you failed this exam with 45. Yeah, you only need a little bit more in time management, a little bit more in knowledge. To pass this examination. Nobody has perfect knowledge. And nobody has perfect exam technique. They both can be improved. And like David Beckham, I want you to be good with both feet on the ball. 
So it means working away at your weakness. And if you are self-aware um, that time is your major enemy, then it's, yeah, getting quicker. Susan, absolutely, Susan. Yeah, I think that applies to everybody. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, that helps your knowledge. It helps your speed. So it's probably not binary, is it? It's probably 60, 40, 80, 20, 70, 30 um, as to what you need to improve because everybody can have a bit more have a bit more knowledge and everybody can have a slightly better examination technique. But it's a, a worthwhile process to think about. What do you think the catchphrase is? Say what you see, except maybe those keys are a bit shiny. Say what you see. Maybe the door should be closed. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Am I talking to myself? There is a phrase. Let me key in the phrase. I think you will be familiar with it. Old keys don't open new doors. I want you to pass the SBR exam in March. Now, assuming that you have covered the syllabus, assuming you are a resit student, yeah, you've been round the block once and you are wanting to pass the exam in March, I can help you achieve that goal. I can help you achieve the goal of passing the exam in June. If you're a virgin, not a problem. Message me. Yeah, check me out, find me out, track me down. Not a problem. I can help you pass the exam in June. Yeah, from scratch, no assumed prior knowledge. Even if you've had exemptions, even if you've been out of studying for a while, doesn't matter. I can help you pass the exam in June. I can only really now help you pass the exam in March if you've already done some legwork. And the course I'm referring to, or the methodology of me helping you pass, is the Revision Plus course. And I want to deep dive, yeah, deep dive into that. So just bear with me for a moment. Yeah, just bear with me for a moment whilst we have a new share. Because what I want to do is to show you my reset product. So we're going, we're lifting the lid we're going under the bonnet of the course. It's an online course, flexible. So much of it is pre-recorded. You can study evenings, weekends. You can study when you want. Can you see a bunch of red? Yeah. Can you see my, can somebody just give me a Y to verify that they can see that I've successfully managed? Yeah. Thank you very much, Mo. Thank you very much. Right. Well, let me talk you through. Yeah, this is those of you who come on this course. This is effectively uh, what you will see. All right. So what do we do? We start at the beginning and there's a little five minute video of telling you how the course works for you. There's a study plan. We've got various live Zoom sessions and we're away. So you've got like, I don't know, 20 minutes, the kind of preamble to get into it. You can see that I've broken the initial part of the course, it's linear, into groups, accounting standards, ethics, investor focus, and cash flow. All right. So I've broken the course down. You work through it linear in a in a linear fashion. Group accounts comes up at question number one. Let's see what we are given at question number one. So we've got 10 things to do to use this session. All right. And it starts by making sure 
that you are comfortable with the concept of a pre-populated spreadsheet. So you've got some exercises here from my tuition phase, nice and simple exercises to build up your awareness and confidence yeah, in the uh, basics of the pre-populated spreadsheet. You've got a video, which, you know, is an interactive video, which gives you the knowledge, recapping the knowledge. Now, I, I'm not teaching group accounts from scratch, but I'm spending an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, making sure you understand the basics. You've got revision notes. I think it's about 20 pages of revision notes. All the formats are there. And in order to approach the question, I want to help you understand, yeah, how to approach the question so that you are developing the skills, you know how the spreadsheet works, you understand the requirement or, uh, of it all. Yeah, and then I put you in the shoes of a marker. I show you an answer, I show you a question, I get you to do it, I've then done it two or three times, we mark my answer and you can see what I've done right and what I've done wrong. It's interactive, it's personal, yeah, you, you're in charge, yeah, of the process. All right. Let me get some guidance on how to work the pre-populated spreadsheet, a demonstration question. And, you know, this is taking an evening. Yeah. Maybe longer, depending on your love or, or otherwise of group accounts. And then we have an exercise for you to do, which you won't have seen before. It's a question that I've written that's only available on my revision course. And I was inspired to write this from a conversation from the examiner who said, who, 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 who kind of, anyway, Salomon, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good little question. You upload it, I mark it, and hey, presto, yeah, we're away. You get, a, you get to see the answer, you get quizzes. Now, that process of revision notes, revision videos, understanding skills, being a marker, doing a question, that process is repeated for standards. That process is repeated for ethics. That process is repeated for investor focus, current issue, call it what you will, and as well as for cash flow. And you can see that my course will close. This will close next week. The, the window for registering on this course, the Revision Plus course, the Reset course, is tight because you have to submit your first assignment by the 4th of Feb, then one by the 10th of Feb, then one by the 11th of Feb, and then one on Valentine's Day. You can submit them earlier, but these are deadlines. I want you to be properly prepared. These assignments are small. I give very detailed feedback to boost your confidence and where you've messed up. I don't just say you've messed up. I tell you how to put it right. All right. I understand. And I want you to pass. This then enables you to move on to do these two mocks. These are mocks which are done on the ACCA practice platform. They're original. They're original. Yeah. Old keys won't open new doors. And look, and then you've got my answers to specimen one, specimen two, specimen A, specimen B. You've got past exam questions and others, and I write my own answers. So I don't know, specimen two. There it is. <laughs> and you've got the, you can do the questions on the practice platform. Yeah, but you've got the questions here. You've got my answers here. Yeah, and you've got the video debrief. I work these answers. I show you how, yeah, we answer these questions. And you can probably This is see. my debrief and working through of the question of Hill, which is the specimen paper for the September 23 onwards ACCA SBR exam and illustrates yeah, and I work it. 
I work it. So look, the spelling's not perfect. You know, acquisition isn't spelt correctly there, but enough is said for me. Now, that's the first six months when it was a sub. I think I want to calculate the profit loss arising on the disposal of the sub. And to that extent, there's a pro forma which you should be aware of and you can dump into. Yeah. So you take. I think you get the idea. Yeah, I think you get the idea now. Uh, what I got to do is get backwards. What I got to do is close off test reach. Diddly um pum bum. Help. What am I doing? Am I doing am I doing that? Mm -hmm. That's not what I meant to do. Bear with me for a moment. So you can see that deep dive into the Revision Plus course. Yeah, there's loads of material. I'm proud of this course. It's a turnaround scenario because I'm taking in your work for marking. Marking is the wrong word to describe it. You can see, yeah, here on the on 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 the right the let the, the the stuff in black is the student's answer where i've given and you can see i've given a few marks but the feedback that i give is on the right yeah so it's not really marking it's giving you detailed feedback i know these questions backwards yeah i'm able to do this for you yeah not for everybody that's why that's why the course has to close that's why there's a limited number of people because i need to stay sane i need to stay married all right um so if you come on the revision course because you want to pass the exam in march yeah i want you to sort of promise me that you've covered the course i you know the stuff and i can uplift you i can improve you i can polish you you get fresh material you get Four assignments which are marked one on groups one on ifrs one on ethics one on current issues and if you're doing the uk variant a fifth one on the uk variant you get two mock exams that i marked and you saw there there's another four five yeah mock exams as well additional mock exams as well you get revision notes i get you through exam technique i give you sensible answers you get another five mocks as well yeah, I write my own answers. There are live sessions where I do Q&As and support you. There's technical WhatsApp support. Yeah, whilst this session has been going on, I've had three messages come in already. I will answer them when I get off this session. There's a payment plan. I know my students. All right. A lot of students are sent to Kaplan, sent to BPP because their employers are tied into a training contract. Fair enough. That's the way of the world for some people. Other people are free to have a choice and finance the course themselves. Yeah, so I understand that. And that is why my fee structure allows you to split the payment in two to make an initial payment to register on the course and a subsequent payment yeah next month so that's my heavy sales that's my heavy sales pitch that's my explanation as to how to pass sbr in march with me by your side Yes, you can climb Mount Everest on your own, but it's a lot easier with a Sherpa. Think of me as your Sherpa. Yes, you can learn to drive on your own. Can you learn to drive on your own? Probably not. Yeah, it's just things are a lot easier if you've got someone who can coach you and support you. 
motivate you, correct you, pick you up, dust you off. Now, there's quite a lot of free resources that I put out there. So it's, it's I mean, how much of a game changer is Instagram? I don't know, probably not really. But I do, I run an Instagram account purely for SBR. So there you go. Uh, sign up for that if you want to. Find me on that if you want to. Love Spotify. I love my podcasts. So find my Spotify account. Listen to my podcasts. There's a whole series of them. No charge. 10 minutes long. They're free. You know, they're, they're, they're out there for the world. Bit of content-led marketing, I suppose. Uh, but giving back as well. Not everybody can afford my fees. I get that. But I can still support them in some way. Love LinkedIn. On there most days. Yeah, bit banging the drum. Or SBR, banging the drum for me. Technical information. Yeah, worth following me on LinkedIn if you aren't already. Worth being on LinkedIn, in my humble opinion. YouTube. I do stuff on YouTube. Um, some of it's a bit random, but I do it. It's there. And uh, you're more than welcome to, yeah, find me on YouTube and to... Uh, you know, engage with with the videos there. Absolutely. Um, please do that. You'll find a couple of debrief answers and whatever. And of course, ACCA, you know, the practice platform. And none of these cost any money. Doesn't cost any money to listen to my podcast. Doesn't cost any money to listen to me on YouTube. Doesn't cost any money to go on to the ACCA practice platform. All right. Read, reading articles and whatever. So I've been talking. I've been talking now for half an hour. You can pass SBR in March if you've already done some groundwork. All right. And that probably means that you've sat the exam and failed it, or you've just about completed a course. And you're now looking for high quality, yeah, high quality, personalized, flexible revision. Then you come to the right place. If you will, if you haven't cracked SBR in terms of its technical content and course, then June is the exam. David. I want you to pass first time. David, I want you to not have a mental breakdown, get divorced, get sacked, get ill. Yeah, it's a big old syllabus. It's not like SBL. SBL's all waffle. Skills are relatively straightforward in their multiple choice and numbers. SBR is a big technical paper, which then requires you to apply and use judgment and do calculations. Now, I'm not I'm not making you scared of it. I'm just saying you've got to respect the mountain and have the right equipment and the right guide. Then it's fun. Yeah, you got fantastic views at the top of this mountain. It's beautiful. It's demanding. You don't walk a mountain in flip flops. Yeah, you don't spend, you don't run a marathon next month. You can't lose a stone for a wedding next week. It's these things take a bit of time. So, David, to recap, I would not recommend sitting in March if you haven't long started studying. You need really to be thinking about February as the month of revision. February is the month of revision. Is it best to dive into the revision at first as opposed to the tutorial? You need to have a base. To get the most out of revision, you are revising. If when you're doing an exam question on the tuition phase and you are you need to be able to move on, you need to be able to be practice your time management. And if you're weak on a topic and are having to look at your notes and not understanding it, 
you're not getting the most out of the revision experience. So you do need to have the knowledge first before you can apply it. You, you, you need to learn the lines before the dress rehearsal. You need to learn the lines before the dress rehearsal so that on the night, the performance is correct. You need to know how to kick a football, yeah, and how to do the basics before the training game, before the pre-season friendly, so that when it's the real match, you know how to do it. So you can't just go straight into a real match. You've got to learn the little skills, learn the lines, practice it in a safe environment on revision, and then you're ready for the real exam. Um, Alexandra, yeah, my older ones are still relevant. I, there's, there's none really there I, I want to go and delete. Well, I have deleted a couple which aren't relevant. Um, obviously, something like sustainability is slightly a moving feast, but I actually, I don't, I, I still think what I've said in those are all relevant. So my podcasts are still relevant. Thank you, Alexandra. Good question. I'm glad you like the podcast. Uh, so, you know, I finished watching the free online videos from Open for the whole of the course. Will this be enough to start your revision course? I've not really attempted any questions. Um, I'm slightly worried about the word watching. Um, if you've covered the whole course, yes. Yeah. If you've covered the course and think you have a reasonable understanding of it, yes. The reason I'm slightly, slightly hesitant is watching is a passive experience. Yeah, on my course, my videos are engaging. I'm taking in marking. You're doing you're doing things as much as watching because, you know, I didn't learn to swim by watching YouTube videos on how to swim. I was in I was in the swimming pool, you know. Um, so, yeah, Sienna, if you feel you've covered the course, you feel you've got some knowledge. Now's the time to revise that knowledge to practice that knowledge and to apply that knowledge, I would welcome you on my course. Thank you. Thank you. You can see there my WhatsApp number. If you're in the UK, uh, uh, three, five, five. if you're in the UK, you don't do the plus four, four. But I really am obsessed with WhatsApp. Um, it is the quickest way of getting hold of me. Obviously, I do look at LinkedIn and I do look at my email and I do even look at Instagram messages and stuff. Um, and you can easily find me on social media. Um, you know, I, I go through the medium of FME. So when you are uh, ultimately buying, when you're ultimately registering with the course, you're on an FME website, but that then redirects you through uh, to me instantly. Oh, 48. You slightly validate what I've said. If you do it in six weeks, you do fall short. Yeah, it's 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 too, it's it's too much to do it. So, well done. All right, you've had a crack, and I can turn you around. Absolutely not a problem. All right. So, what is the advice in terms of preparation? Fresh material. Come on my course. Let me mark your work. Let me tell you what you're doing right. Let me tell you what you're doing wrong and how to fix it. If you go back and look at your own, your old material, you'll remember it. You'll be stale. Yeah, it's, I want to challenge you. 
you're a, you're a clearly a strong student. If you got 48 in December, fantastic, fantastic result. You did 48 good things. So close. But it will be a different exam. It's not for me to say whether the December exam was easy or hard. Some people would have found it easy. Some people would have found it hard. It depends how well they were prepared. And as you say, there were different exams. Cash flow came up, for example. Now, I thought, and I don't think this is a popular view, I thought it was quite an easy question. But some students, as I understand it, don't like cash flow. Fingers crossed, let's hope it doesn't come up. Oh, shit. There's a compulsory 30 mark question, question number one. Ooh, morale goes down. Now, actually, one of the things you had to do was calculate goodwill and calculate an impairment loss, and that was worth six marks. And nothing to do with cash flow, bit on deferred tax, and you kind of it was it was okay. So exam questions are always such a wide syllabus area. My advice to recap is to come on my course and then you will pass it. You won't have to be, you'll get 58, not 48. We won't have to this, we won't have this stress. All right. I'll, I'll make you stress during the course so that you are relaxed when you come to the exam. I'll give you the feedback. I'll give you the guidance. David, right. That was the... Uh, uh, right, David, in your opinion, would I be best to try for another exam in March, SPL, and then start learning for the SBR exam? Or would you recommend saying, or, sorry to be off topic? No, David, that's a really good question. And let me let me address this directly. It is possible from a standing start for you to pass SBL in March. Yeah, if if you want to. If you've got a little bit about you, and when I say a little bit about you, you've worked and you can write and you read a newspaper. Yeah. And and you're not uh you're not a rote learner. You're not a you're not a you're not a 18 year old virgin, 21 year old virgin out of university, you know, fresh out of university. Because strategic business leader. There isn't really anything to learn. There, there isn't really a technical content as such. It's a pre-scene. It's a case study. You're being asked your opinion. And so there is a way to pass this exam. You do have to learn certain techniques. And but 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 it's it's much it is achievable. It's very different from SBR. Because with SBR, either you understand deferred tax or you don't. Either you understand sale and lease back or you don't. Either you know what a segmental report is, you don't. Either you know how to calculate goodwill or you don't. And there's so much of that in SBR. And then there's a contextual and there's an ethics and ah, uh, there's too much. In, S in, in SBL, hey, here's a case study. It's an airline business. There's two airline businesses. What do you think they should do in terms of their marketing strategy? Da 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 da. And, the, and you know, and Dark Rabbit. There's all sorts of different scenarios um, that you can put down. So you have to be articulate. You have to have an opinion. But there's no right or wrong answer in SPL. So David, if you wanted to go hell for leather now to do an exam in March, do SPL from scratch. That's fine. I would encourage you to sign up with one of my colleagues at uh, FME they, they their courses are open and they will help you um, and then when you've finished the exam at the beginning of March yeah then you know you've got more time you've got if you want to go for June you've still got March April May June it's tight but you would still have enough time I, I would be comfortable signing you up for June um, then so that would be a and there's always an option within my courses the platinum courses for you to flip it if you found it was too much or if you'd failed SBL and you wanted to redo it. David, that's my answer to your question. Um, 
I'm just saying it straight. It's not off topic. It's what you, it's the question you answered, you wanted answered. And I hope I've answered it correctly. Well, not correctly. I mean, it's not binary, is it? When does registration close? Well, you need to have entered the exam by the 29th of this month. Yeah. Um, so I will I will close it for sure on the 29th of this month. Um, a part of me would like to close it earlier. Um, and that would be because I've I've I filled up the course and I, I want to, as I say, stay happily married. Um, uh, but so, yeah, it'll certainly be open this week and this weekend. And then at some stage uh, it'll close. Um, but the the latest it will close will be the 28th. Yeah, 28th uh, of the month. And what is it now? It's the, I don't know, I lose track of the days of the week. Uh, 17th. So, yeah, closes next week, basically. Um, as I say, stage payments, um, you do it online. So that's when registration closes. Outside of the revision course, how many extra hours will we need to do ourselves? The course should cover everything. There's so much in it. There was a library. I didn't show you the library. I, um but there's, there's there are mock exams there is there is enough content in there trust me yeah that you you can work through um i'm a big fan of little and often so rather than you work 6 hours at the weekend on a saturday uh it's i think better that you work you know 3 hours on a saturday and you try and work an hour 2 hours every evening or in the mornings one of the one of the things that I do discuss with students is when you study. Do you go to work fresh, spend a day at work, come home knackered, and then revise? Or do you change your life pattern, set the alarm a bit early, set the alarm at for five o'clock, six o'clock, get up, do an hour or two's work, turn out for work a bit knackered <laughs> let's be brutal what's really important for you in these next few weeks is that you give your best for yourself for sbr pick it over at work don't come home from work knackered and then revise i mean some people have to and that's their rhythm and that's whatever i'm just trying to open up the idea yeah little and often is a far better way podcasts you can listen to them on the train it's online. Yeah, if you're on a train journey, bus journey, you can you can also be watching a video. You can also be looking at notes. Yeah, you can multitask little and often. So the course includes uh, everything that you need to know. And I would encourage you to work through the month of February. There are various deadlines. Um, if I go back to the course again. If I go back to the course again, I've this is where I messed up, wasn't it? We've 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 jumped out. Let me close that. I was trying to show you more of the course. Ah, there we go. That's what it was. Yeah, so um one of the things you've got here is perform additional library. Yeah. So you've got loads of questions. These are small little questions. Yeah. Practice questions. Yeah. With the answers. So unintimidating five mark, 10 mark. Yeah. Loads of them. And those are the ones on groups. These are the ones on IFRSs. All right. So there's, there is plenty of material on the course. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, in addition to the the big mock exams. Um, so I think, Sienna, I've answered your question. Uh, Sadiqa, besides practicing questions, what's the best way to actually memorize the rules? Uh, it's easy to get them mixed up. Any advice would be appreciated. Okay. 
Um, there's a limit to memorizing. There's a limit to rote learning. Uh, you're not going to be asked, what's the definition of impairment? You're not going to be asked it. You're going to be given a situation where you have to explain what you're going to do. And what you're going to do in that situation is an impairment review. And you'll be given information that's in the ingredients in it. So I do like a little bit of rote learning. A little bit. And the best way to rote learn is repetition. Handwriting it out, saying it out, handwriting it out, saying it out, handwriting it out, saying it out, having a post-it note on your fridge. A little bit of rote learning is okay, but it's never, ever, 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 ever going to be enough to help you pass this examination to get you through. It's never enough. Apples, apples, apples. Application, application, application. It's taking that knowledge, that understanding, and putting it and mixing it with the with the content of the question and the and spitting out a coherent answer. It's not easy. I'm not claiming it's going to be easy. But with a guide by your side who's giving you feedback, who's got clear and sensible, I think examiner's answers are awful. And you are not expected to produce an answer to the quality and length and depth and detail of the examiner. It's simply not what you need to do to pass the exam. The examiner is writing an answer without pressure, without time pressure. He feels the pressure to get it right. I don't. You don't. You don't have to get the answer right. You don't. <clears throat> Football teams can concede goals and still win the game. You can make mistakes in this exam and still pass. You only need 50%. Yeah, so it is difficult. There are challenges. There are many rules. Little and often is the way that you study. And breadth is better than depth. You've got to be able to salvage marks out of every scenario, whether there's a question on leasing, whether there's a question on segmental reporting, whether there's a question on cash flow. They all came up last time. Some people did an exam where there was segmental reporting, sale and lease back and a cash flow. And for some people, that's lovely. But if you've got a few blind spots, it can really embarrass you because to pass this exam, you need to be marked out of 100. Kinza, how do we handle IFRS 13 and IFRS 9? By understanding the principles, by working hard. Fair value measurement is a relatively straightforward standard, in my humble opinion. But financial instruments, yeah, need some respect, need some respect. Yeah, you can't take a shortcut. Need some respect. I haven't had my tea yet. I budgeted an hour. Half an hour for chat. Half an hour for Q&A. My WhatsApp is buzzing. Are there any further questions? I'm going to, in my head, count to 10. And when I get to 10, if there aren't any further questions, I shall say adios, au revoir, au revoir. Would you like to hear a joke? Yeah, would you like to hear a joke? So, I heard that there were Three types of accountant. Three types of accountant. Those who can count and those who can't. 
That's the joke. It's not quite what I do as a living. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you another joke. Uh, what do you call a fish with no eyes? What do you call a fish with no eyes? Very good. Very good. Right. OK. Right. Moving on, moving on, moving on. I do have a question coming in my direct. Uh, how do you handle it in the exam if you go blank and forget a pro forma? Um, it does happen. Um, it's best that that happens in the mocks so that you uh, work through the fear and come out the other side. I have an expression about just moving on. So you come back to that topic, you come back to it, you've got three and a quarter hours. If you genuinely know it, you, of course you can have a blank and then you can you can you can move on and know that you can come back to it. Yeah, a little bit later. What you don't do is sit there for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, waiting for divine inspiration when there's the rest of the exam to be getting on with. Yeah. And ultimately when you come back, if you're still a bit black, you guess. You put something down because if you put nothing down, do you know what? You're going to get no marks. If you put something down, you're challenging the marker. You look again at the requirement. What are they asking? What are they asking? Is there a keyword in the requirement that you can discuss? Is the word relevant in there? Is the word impairment is in there? Is the, you know, is there is there something in the question itself which is worthy of a little bit of a explanation start it, it's the most difficult thing sometimes to start read the read the information again why are you being told it's an old person why are you being told that it's an uncle why are you why are you being told that there's a there's a bonus that's related to the profit the information is given to you in the question for a reason to get you to think so it doesn't necessarily say this is a related party. It tells you we have transacted with the uncle of the director. You think, oh, hang on a minute. You know, why are you told it's an uncle? Why are you told it's an uncle? That you would then got to have the trigger of, oh, that means it's a related party. So, you know, that's how you handle it if you go blank in the exam. Yeah, pause. But don't don't delay. Move on. Do something else. Come back to it later. Reread the information in question. Right. Thank you. Thank you. You know where I live. I live in St Albans. You know my WhatsApp number. <laughs> you can track me down. Please. I'm here to help you. Um, can you explain how we find the questions? Log into the website and that. I can explain anything. Raphaelia, but uh, if you to enroll on my course is very, very straightforward. You can find, you know, the, the questions are on the the ACCA questions are on the uh, ACCA practice platform, which you access through your my ACCA account. All right. Um, so that's how you find the mocks on that. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you are already learning, Miss Bal. Thank you very much for that validation. And thank you for attending everybody this evening. God bless you one and all.